right, so starting off, we're gonna talk about how the crazy cart works, um, kind of a little bit of how you drive it, uh, that kind of stuff. So to start off here, a lot of people ask me, is there a motor, is there a motor, is there an accelerator, how do you get speed, all that kind of stuff. So there is in fact an electric motor right here. I'm running a brushless motor. Um, we'll get more into that in a little bit, but there's the motor, here's the battery. Uh, no, it is not a Duracell battery. I just got that, uh, I made that case because I thought it would be kind of funny. It's not a nine volt battery, it is a 48 volt battery. Next up here is the accelerator. So this pedal, as soon as I hit the gas, the crazy car starts moving. Um, this right here is the drift bar. Mine does not look like a normal crazy cart drift bar. The normal style drift bar is about right here and it's a straight bar coming right out and you pull it up. And as soon as you pull it up, it changes the angle of those rear casters, just like that. So if you see right here, this bar that runs underneath the cart is where the casters are mounted to. So when I pull this lever, you can see, the whole bar itself moves. And these pieces there are just stoppers to stop the, the drift bar from moving too far forwards or too far back. Um, but yeah, essentially the casters are just connected to this bar on the back here and this bar comes through the cart and connects to the drift bar here where I cut it off. So it's just a direct connection straight to that drift bar and that's how your casters gain that angle. So when the casters are down and you're not pulling on the drift bar, the cart has no side to side movement in the back. But as soon as you pull that drift bar up and change the angle of the casters, it allows them to spin freely, which allows you to essentially drift the cart. Um, a lot of people say it's not real drifting. Obviously it's not real drifting. It's not rear wheel drive. It just looks like drifting. It's kind of the style you drive it in. Um, and it's more fun to call it that. But I did this mod simply for the fact that it gives you a lot more leverage. So pulling my bar, it, I mean, it takes essentially no force to pull the drift bar. Um, on the stock setup, I cut it off right here and uh, to make room for all this stuff, obviously. The stock one extends to about here and you have to pull it straight up. And that's not the most comfortable. Um, honestly, if you're riding for a long time, usually I'll ride for two hours at a time. Uh, it can get pretty uncomfortable towards the end there. Um, but yeah, I think on my new frame, um, I'm gonna leave the stock drift bar uh, just to see if I like it more or not. I feel like it gives me a, a little bit more fine control than this one does. This one doesn't seem to be as, uh, as touchy. It feels a little bit loose uh, in my opinion. Um, but yeah, that's how you activate the drift on the crazy cart. Um, and then the steering wheel here, it does not do a full 360. It'll only go 180 or it, it goes a little bit further than 180 either direction. So you can actually drive it backwards. Um, you pull the drift bar and you're moving side to side. Um, I'll put some videos up on the screen in a second to show you an example of how the cart works, how it moves if you haven't seen one before. Um, but if you are familiar with it, then uh, this should give you a pretty good idea of how we actually initiate the drift and start going sideways. So now we're going to go over kind of all the basic parts, the most commonly upgraded parts, all that kind of stuff. Um, to start off with, one of my most highly recommended mods is changing out your stock headset bearing for an aftermarket sealed headset bearing. Um, the main benefit of this mod is it eliminates a lot of the steering wobble you get at high speeds, which can be a really big problem. It, I mean, it's, it's thrown me off the cart before. Um, and this mod is 100% one of the best quality of life mods you can do on a crazy cart. Um, the second mod I would recommend doing is a seat pad. I don't have mine with me right now, but I do have a seat pad from Walmart. It's actually a stadium seat cushion um, and it fits in the seat perfectly. It cushions the bottom and the back of the seat. Um, and that is one of my favorite mods. It has saved me on so many long rides from 
getting sore, being uncomfortable, all that kind of stuff, because on rough pavement, you feel every crack and every bump on this thing um, because there is no suspension. It's not necessarily uncomfortable, but it's a little bit annoying at times, and the seat pad pretty much just eliminates all of that, and it was like $5 from Walmart. So definitely worth it in my opinion. So I'm not really sure if I would consider this a mod, um, but on a stock crazy cart, right where these mounting holes are, there are two pegs, and I'll put a picture of those up on the screen. Those, I recommend every one remove. They have made me flip so many times before I remove them, even when I was on a stock cart going pretty slow. If you hit anything, any curb, anything like that with those, with those pegs on the bottom there, it will flip the cart, and funny enough, they're actually there to stop the cart from flipping. Uh, so a lot of times it hurts more than it helps, so I would definitely recommend getting rid of those. Another really nice quality of life mod, especially if you're a taller person, an older person that wants to get into crazy carts, um, you can actually move this seat back. So if you see this line here, this line is actually where the seat used to uh, ride right against. So this the seat here was flush with this line. So I've moved it back probably an inch, inch and a half maybe. Um, and even just that little amount makes the biggest difference in the world. Uh, that's one of the easiest mods. The holes to move the seat back are actually already in the cart, so it's an option that comes on the cart. A lot of people don't know about it. Um, and if you wanted to move the seat back even further, which I have seen, you can drill your own holes and then just mount these straight up to those holes. Um, one downside to that is it does kind of throw the weight distribution off a little bit and it can make the cart drive a little differently. Um, but other than that, it's definitely a very useful mod. Um, I'll go ahead and show you guys those mounting holes real quick. So this hole here and this hole right here are the old mounting holes for the seat. And the ones in the back are the new ones that were already there on the cart that I just went ahead and moved my seat back to. Here's the other ones that towards the top side there. One hole there, one hole there. So I moved it back to that one right there. All right, so let's get into what I think is the best first mod to do on the crazy cart. Um, in my opinion, the first best beginner mod would be to uh, buy a 36 volt lithium battery and I'll put a link to one up in the video and in the screen here um, as well as a 36 volt speed controller and what this does is it gets you a longer battery life a little bit more power uh, you can run the cart to about 15 to 18 miles an hour um, from my own personal experience of running a 36 volt setup if you're I don't know roughly 150 to 200 pounds um, but for I mean even a little kid you can go even faster than that um, but I would definitely recommend a 36 volt battery, at least 10 to 12 amp hours. Um, and amp hours essentially equates to battery life in simplest terms. Um, but pairing that with a 36 volt speed controller on the stock motor that comes in the crazy cart, um, that setup will not run you too much. And it is definitely one of the best cheap setups to do, especially if you're kind of iffy about if you want to really go all in on the cart or not. So. If you have a 36 volt set up on your crazy cart, if you're planning on running one and you want to know what's the next best step after that when you're ready to upgrade, uh, the next best setup would be a 500 watt XL motor. Um, that being the motor out of the XL crazy cart. It's a 36 volt 500 watt motor um, and you will be running that on a 48 volt battery. So you'll be over, over volting the motor and you'll be pairing that with a 48 volt speed controller as well. And I'll put links to those down below as well as pictures up here in the video. Um, that setup right there will run you roughly $250 to $300 depending on where you get your parts, what kind of battery you get, that kind of thing. Um, but that setup uh, got me 22 to 23 miles an hour and a solid hour and a half of ride time um, on a 14 amp hour 48 volt battery. Um, that was a super solid setup, super reliable, a ton of fun, uh, super torquey. Um, it was overall my personal favorite setup um, that I had, I probably just because I ran it the longest, honestly. I do love the new brushless motor setup that I'm running, um, and I'll get into that setup in a little bit and go into detail about where I got all those parts from because um, that is the setup that I recommend for the experienced riders um, or anyone that wants to build their own crazy cart and wants to go all out. Uh, that's one of the best mods you can get out there on the market. Um, 
That's one of the best motor setups you can get that's on the market right now. Um, the homie Jeremy, uh, he is the one that sells the kit. His company is Charged Up 3D. I'm gonna link all his socials, put it up on the screen, everything like that. Um, but yeah, his kit is super awesome, super reliable, and it is worth every single penny. So, this here is the wide caster upgrade from Taxi Garage. This is pretty much the only mod that I've got from them, um, but it is worth every single penny that I spent on it. This, these casters have been beat, banged, jumped off of curbs, bumped into walls, all kind of stuff, and they still work good as new. I've cleaned them once since I bought them. I tore them apart, re-greased the bearings, everything like that. Um, I'll put a picture on the screen and a video of how dirty they were and then what they looked like afterwards. Um, but after I did that, they ride like they are brand new. And the longboard wheels add a lot of high speed stability um, as well as uh, preventing you from tripping over rocks, cracks, things like that. I don't know um, about how many miles necessarily I get out of these rear wheels, but uh, they do last me a solid two months at a time. Um, this is only my third set, and I've been running these casters for about eight months, I believe. Um, and they are definitely worth it and definitely a really nice upgrade when you're ready to spend a little bit more money on the cart. Alright, so next up, let's get into the setup that I'm currently running on the cart. Alright, so here we have the brushless motor kit from Charged Up 3D, also known as Jeremy in the Crazy Cart Modders Facebook group. Um, it is a brushless motor paired with a Flipski controller. Um, fully tunable, connects to Bluetooth on your phone. You can see your battery life, how long you have left uh, in terms of miles. It gives you an estimate of range. Uh, tells you a whole lot of useful information about your battery itself, um, your consumption, all that kind of stuff. Um, and the tuning capabilities are just crazy. Here we have a 48 volt, 20 amp hour battery. Um, and this battery is actually pushing 50 amps of output current. Um, the 48 volt battery that you typically see on a 500 watt setup is only running uh, 30 amps uh, unless you get a nicer pack from somebody. Um, but yeah, this setup is running 50 amps uh, and paired with the motor, I get 38 miles an hour as a top speed. And I have seen people run this kit a lot quicker with a much larger battery. And no, this is not a Duracell battery. It's just a case that I made with some vinyl. All right, so this here is another cool mod that I did. Um, it is actually a GPS speedometer that I'm running off of this uh, battery pack right here. Um, I, actually, funny story behind this. I used to have a uh, GoPro Hero 5, and the GPS uh, location on that uh, GoPro did not work all the time, so I couldn't always put the uh, GPS speedometer that you can add and post in the GoPro Quick app. Um, and I really like having that on my videos because a lot of people ask me how fast does the cart go? How fast were you going? So I like to put it right there in the video. Um, so I actually got this, so while I'm recording and I'm moving, um, right now it's not working because I'm under a ceiling, uh, but if I was out in the open, it would display my speed right here. And it's accurate within one to two miles per hour. Oh, look, there it goes, it actually came on. So as you can see there, zero miles per hour. I'll put a clip on screen of me actually using it in a video to show the 37, 38 miles an hour top speed. Um, but yeah, that's another super cool mod. Another quality of life mod that I'm running on my cart is this steering wheel. Uh, this steering wheel is about an inch larger in diameter than the stock steering wheel. This one came off of the XL Crazy Cart. It is a direct bolt-on. All you do is take this Allen key loose, pop the steering wheel out, and the XL steering wheel slides right into the stock uh, neck of the Crazy Cart here. And you tighten the same bolt, the same Allen key, and you're good to go. All right, so let's get into some of the basics of how to actually install these parts. Um, a lot of them are so simple that I can literally show you without even taking the parts off 
Um, a lot of them are direct bolt-on, no modifications needed. Um, unlike some of the other setups I've been talking about, uh, they take a little bit more work and a little bit more tinkering to get going. So when I bought this motor kit from Charged Up 3D, the motor actually came mounted to the motor bracket already. And if you can see there, it's powder coated with this super nice, sparkly, flaky kind of powder coat. Um, the motor mount itself, if you can see there, it's actually a, a big L-shaped bracket. Bolts directly to the stock holes in the Crazy Cart. Uh, which is super, super nice, super convenient. And the sprocket here took barely any adjustment to get to line up with the lower sprocket here on the wheel. So the install of the motor itself was super simple, super quick. I think it literally took me 10 minutes to get the old motor out and the new motor into the, into the neck of the crazy cart. Um, after that, you have to run the wires a little bit differently than you would on a stock cart. They have to come up through one of the tubes on the neck here. And then I drilled two holes in the fork itself to use a zip tie to hold these wires down. And then I used a few more zip ties to hold the wire down around the, the neck here. And what this does is it prevents the wires from getting caught on anything when you're spinning the wheel around. Um, so on the motor wires themselves, you want to leave a little bit of slack because what that allows you to do is fully turn the steering wheel either direction just over 180 degrees without tugging on any of the wires or anything. This is a stock um, wire pass through for the uh, motor wire on the stock carts. Those wires pass through here under the speed controller. The speed controller actually has a really nice 3D printed bracket that mounts directly to the stock mounting holes for the stock Crazy Cart controller, which is also super convenient. It literally took me minutes to install the, the speed controller. And those wires from the motor run directly behind the speed controller to keep them kind of neat. And they plug into these bullet connectors here that come out of the speed controller. Let me see there, it's a blue, green, and a yellow. And that is how the speed controller communicates with the motor. Alright, so next up, let's get into the battery. The battery here um, is about $300 on eBay. I did not pay full price for this battery, um, but it's not going to stop me from being honest about it. Um, I really don't recommend this battery on this brushless setup. I recommend getting a custom built pack from a morgue, I believe is how you say it. Um, they're really popular within the Crazy Cart and the Modified Razor Dirt Bike community. Um, they're really reliable, really high quality custom packs and they will build it to pretty much any specs you need. And they're actually familiar with the brushless kit so they know um, if you message them, they'll know uh, the dimensions and the specs of the battery that you want. And then if you want to change anything, you can actually just let them know and they'll help you customize it to whatever needs you have. Um, I'm actually in the process of getting a custom built uh, battery pack right now. Um, so I will not be running this one for much longer but I will be making another Duracell case for it because uh, I love this case. It gets a lot of hilarious reactions um, and I just love the way it looks. I mean, it's a massive nine volt battery. Who wouldn't love that? I believe for this motor kit from Charged Up 3D, I paid $500 um, and that also included the option for the powder coated bracket. You can get a little bit cheaper without the powder coated bracket and it'll come as just bare steel. Um, but I definitely recommend getting it powder coated to avoid any rust issues or anything. Or if you do get the bare bracket, uh, take the motor off of it and go ahead and spray some clear coat or paint or something on it so uh, it will not rust on you. All right, next up we have the wide casters. I paid, I believe $260 for these from Taxi Garage. Um, the replacement longboard wheels, uh, you can get them, I believe, for between $50 to $60. Uh, don't quote me on that. I may be wrong. I will double check that when I'm editing this, but um, I do believe they are $50 to $60, uh, but I will put the price on the screen. Installing these wide casters is super simple. Um, it's essentially just a kingpin that you remove and it allows you to take the caster off in one whole piece. I might be calling that the wrong bolt. I'm not sure if the bolt that actually connects the caster to the bearing is the kingpin. Um, but the one you want to remove is that one right there. And that will allow you to take the entire stock caster off in one piece and install the brand new caster on in one piece. 
Um, and that install, no joke, took me less than five minutes. It was super quick, super simple, um, and it's one, another one of the direct bolt-on modifications. For the battery itself, um, I've seen many different methods for installing it. Um, because my battery is so big, it did not fit between the seat and the neck, and it did not fit where the stock batteries go down here. So I had to come up with a way to mount it to the side of the cart. So I've essentially got a bolt here that goes through the cart and is mounted with a lock nut on the bottom there. And then this side has a bolt coming the opposite direction through the cart with a nut right there that I can spin down, which will hold this bracket on. And that bracket stops the battery from moving back and forth. And then the case that I've got protects the battery itself in case it wants to slide left to right. Um, it avoids a lot of the risk of banging the battery, damaging the battery by scratching anything like that because the number one thing you do not want to do with a lithium battery is damage it or anything like that because they are a fire hazard if they do get damaged and they're not taken care of properly. If you are going to store the battery for a while, you want to cycle it, which means you want to charge the battery and then discharge the battery periodically. And you want to keep it in a cool place. Do not, I do not recommend keeping them in your garage or outside. I would definitely keep your lithium batteries inside. I actually keep this battery in my closet when I'm not using it because it's the coolest place. Um, but I do use it quite often, so I don't ever have to worry about charging it or discharging it when it's not in use because I put it to work probably two times a week. Alright, so for the headset, um, it takes a little bit more uh, tinkering to install. Not necessarily that it's difficult, you just have to remove a few parts. Um, so you do have to take off this Allen key on the steering wheel here to actually take the steering wheel off of the cart. And then the two nuts here, I have these here just in case, you really only need one with a sealed headset bearing. One of these nuts will tighten it down enough for it not to come loose. Um, but essentially it comes with a bottom race and a top race. And all you have to do is knock the stock crazy cart races out of the mounting locations there. Um, I literally just used a flathead and a hammer to bang them out. And then I used a hammer to hammer the new ones into the cart. Um, it's not really necessary to hammer them in. It was just a tight fit for me. It might be different for you, um, but I had to do that to get them to seat properly. And then after that, you pretty much just install everything the same way you took it off. Um, and I will be making more videos going more into depth about these mods. Um, right now, I'm just trying to go over the basically the prices and the uh, basic process of installing them to uh, basically let you know, is this for me, is this not for me, that kind of thing. All right, so finally, let's get into what setup I recommend for your purposes. Um, so. If you're just getting into a crazy cart, if you're building a crazy cart for your kid and they're pretty young um, and they just want to get a little bit more battery life, a little bit more speed out of the cart, definitely go for the 36 volt battery and controller combination. That is easily the best mod if you're in that situation where you're building a cart for your child, you have one sitting around that you want to try out upgrading. Um, that's definitely the cheapest, easiest mod you can do to get started in getting into the world of modding your crazy cart. Now, if you've been riding for a little bit, say you've already got a 36 volt setup or you're a little bit older and you wanna jump into something a little quicker, um, I would definitely go for the 48 volt setup, um, which would be a 48 volt battery with the 500 watt uh, 36 volt motor from the XL cart as well as the 48 volt speed controller. That setup is perfect for um, an adult that wants to get into modding a standard crazy cart. Um, it is perfect for someone that's a little bit more experienced on a crazy cart, uh, so even if you're younger. Um, it's definitely not getting into the realm of extreme danger or anything like that. Um, nine times out of 10, unless you're in a big open area, trying to film here a lot of times if you're not in a big open area you're not going to be hitting over 20 miles an hour um, a lot of times on some smaller trails some sidewalk paths things like that you'll likely only be doing 10 to 15 miles an hour um, the main benefit of that setup is the torque um, depending on your weight that setup uh, will do a burnout from a stop. Um, it will not necessarily do a rolling burnout, but you can spin the tire very easily. It sounds awesome, makes a lot of smoke, looks super cool. Um, if you do not ride properly, 
you will burn your tires up. And what I mean by that is um, riding properly is learning how to feather the throttle as well as use your weight and the steering wheel to your advantage to allow the front tire to grip up and not spin so much. And this will save your tire life by so much. I get uh, roughly 35 to 40 miles out of a tire if I'm riding conservatively or if I'm riding normal. Um, if I'm just going crazy, not worried about it and just having fun or my tire is at the end of its life and I'm about to replace it, I'll just go crazy and do rolling burnouts through corners and things like that and smoke the tire up. It sounds awesome, it looks awesome, um, but it is not good for your tire life. The tire that I'm running here is known as the Nobby tire. You can get these on Amazon in a two pack for about $20 and they do come with a tube. Um, and I actually have a lot of spare tubes because if you run your tire down and you replace it on time and it doesn't pop, you can reuse the tube between tires, which is super useful. Um, Taxi Garage does also sell a knobby tire, but it's about $20 for a single tire. So I definitely recommend getting the Amazon one. It is the exact same tire. Um, I'll put a comparison of the tread patterns on the screen for you. It, they are literally identical. Um, so if you wanna save a little money and you're burning up tires, I definitely recommend going for the Amazon two pack. All right, so that is the basics of my crazy cart, my current build, uh, some of my past setups, um, what setups I recommend for you, things like that. Um, and if there's anything that I missed, any questions that you have, anything like that, feel free to uh, ask them down in the comments. Um, and make sure to subscribe and turn the notifications on because I will be posting on YouTube a lot more often. I'll be posting lots of tutorials, lots of install videos, lots of drifting videos, all that kind of stuff. Um, and let me know what you guys want to see. If there's any specific videos, anything like that that you want me to make, go ahead and let me know. And uh, go into the description and click on my link tree and you'll be able to find my TikTok and my Instagram on there. And go ahead and drop a follow on both of those as well. Thank you guys for watching and I hope you have a good one.